Hey guys, just uh, got my Kickstarter Tico 3D in the mail and thought I'd do an unboxing video. Uh, most of you that follow know that most of my videos are silent, so I thought I'd try something different. Um, overall, the box itself is relatively small. Um, it uh, shipped on Friday and I got it today. Um, box is about 17 and a half by 10 inches by about a foot. So, uh, needless to say, I was pretty surprised when I saw it. I already cut the tape. So first we have a quick start guide. I'll uh, <clears throat> scan this in and put it in the video. But uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, a little bit of troubleshooting over here. Uh, tells you the dimensions, what's in the box. Apparently there's a spool in the box. Um, the manual power power adapter uh, this looks like uh, I'm not really sure it doesn't matter and then uh, another more paperwork for regulation uh, let's see. So we got a power supply uh, 12 volts by two and a half amps uh, at least for the U.S. version of the power supply. Then, I uh, got a little foam. Uh, looks like they molded. Uh, uh, underneath that, uh, it says Tico on the inside. So there, there she is, sitting there in the box. Looks like the uh, bottom, the bottom's the same thing. So it also says Tico. Uh, it's got a pretty strong electrical smell on it. top cover. Uh, and this is kind of a pain. Jeez. A pain to get out. Uh, don't pull on it too hard or you'll lift the top out of it. Well, that's really in there. Um, apparently if you pop the top off once it'll keep popping off. And So I don't, I don't know what other people are getting, but uh, 
here's some just blue, uh, I guess Chico branded PLA, desiccant filter, or desiccant pack, vacuum seal, I'm in the middle of moving, so I don't quite have all my tools, but... The uh, spool di diameter, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to know that, is... I don't know, about six and three quarters ish. In comparison, this is uh, LD branded filament, doesn't matter what the filament, but most filament comes in this size. So there's going to be quite a, you'll probably have to re-spool this or find fault, smaller filament spools because this won't fit in there so I may have to print something or just put it on the side um, to use other spools. So, uh, a little bit of foam on the base. Um, the base is a little bit flexible, like they have mentioned on the Kickstarter. Um, it's got a little rubber, rubber feet on the bottom to, to keep it from moving. Um, You can see right here that that's a filament feed tube um, and then the inside of the spool housing there's not much going on a little bit of airflow can get through uh, for the heat I assume uh, power jack on the back um, that's the only connection on here um, pull the there's a protective plastic on it. Uh, if I can get it off. Overall, the feel too when you first pick it up, it's it's actually pretty top heavy, um, which makes sense because of all the electronics. I noticed mine has a mark from where probably you can kind of see it there on the left hand side. It looks like that's about from where the uh, it might even be glue. It kind of looks like they glued it together because you can see a gap here. Um, I'll probably have to take pictures. But, uh... Um, there's a label in there. Uh, I can't really get the camera on there, but... Uh, it says uh, Tico Model 1 serial number, whatever the serial number is. Um, and then it gives you a, uh, I guess, quick step. Connect to Tico Hotspot, open your browser, go to print.tico's forward slash. Um, and then the inside, uh, let me get a better light. Okay, 
Okay, so the uh, let's see. That's kind of the internals. Um, you can see the connectors for the three stepper motors. Uh, there's a stepper motor in the center. That's the uh, for the extruder. Um, you can kind of see the linear rail. I know they were pretty hush hush about the linear rail, but the stepper motor has a gear on it and there's some gear rack um, on the right hand side that uh, that the stepper motors right on. I can't see the bearings but it looks like there's a bearing that sits on the outside from what I can tell and that's, I guess, what gives it its linear motion. Um, so overall, The printer itself feels pretty well made, solid. Um, it is top heavy. The base will come off. Uh, it doesn't appear to matter which way. And just for a good size comparison, that's the uh, M3D Micro, which I had purchased on Kickstarter as well, and uh, the Tico is quite a bit bigger. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it. And. Uh, the, the entire build area, I, I think, will fit inside the Tico. Oh, apparently, if it sits for a few... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so the entire build area... And the... The micro can't even print like to the very corner. So the entire build area of the M3D micro uh, fits inside the bed of the Tico. Um, if the Tico holds its $180 price point, I definitely would recommend the Tico over the M3D micro, which I think think is four or five hundred bucks somewhere around there and uh, I haven't actually used this printer and I think it's going on a year now though <clears throat> I don't know what to say about the production ones but at least the Kickstarter ones they didn't really they did a pretty poor job with software um, and I don't know I had quite a few issues with it so I wouldn't even recommend production ones. I'll deal with that later. But for, I mean, 180 bucks, if that's what they end up uh, sticking to on the price, I mean, that's at least build quality wise, I don't know how it prints yet, but build quality wise, it's, you know, worth it. Um, I have for another size comparison, I have the uh, Ultabots K250V. It's a V-slot Delta printer. And on that printer, it has a 
millimeter build height. And just kind of a size comparison for a 250 diameter, it's more 220 usable. And the build height, I don't quite remember because I it's heavily modded E3D, uh, V6, and uh, I'm running that one on OctoPrint. Uh, for the wireless print server. So, uh, yeah, that's just a good comparison. Uh, if the hot end wasn't in the Ultabots printer, the uh, Tico would definitely fit in there. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I'll uh, do another video over viewing the software. Um, because apparently it creates its own hotspot from what I understand and then you need to connect to that. I'll see if it if DHCP is enabled. But uh but yeah, I'll follow up with another video here soon. Hope you like the unboxing. Thanks guys.